Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the director of ChassisM Technologies and welcome to this latest ChassisM video tutorial. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to discuss something very, very important. What we're going to talk about is where does ChassisM come from and what makes it unique? Because when considering any product, if we're really going to consider why we should use it, we should always consider what its history is and um, the things that make it unique. Now, to set the context for this discussion, the bulk of motorsport simulations are lap time simulation, in particular, pseudo-static lap time simulations. Now, the way this works is basically off a of force balance. It's using the deambulant uh, uh, um, force static um, uh, dynamic um, balance approximation. And the way it works is that we take a typical circuit and we, uh, and we divide it into chunks. So we take a look at this chunk, we take a look at this chunk, we take a look at this chunk, this chunk, this chunk, and we piece it all together. Now, this has a number of advantages. It's very simple and executes very, very quickly. It also gives you a pretty good idea of first order effects, things like aerodynamics and um, gear ratios. Also, if you're ever going to be doing any motorsport vehicle dynamics course at university, whether at an undergrad or a postgraduate level, one of the first things I'll get you to do is put together a basic pseudo-static lap time simulation because it's very instructional. It also gives you a first cut of how to put all this um uh, a first cut of um how to put this all together however ladies and gentlemen this is far from the full story and to truly understand why this is we need to delve back into chassis sim's past where does chassis sim come from chassis sim has its origins in aircraft flight dynamics and control in particular my undergraduate thesis, which was designing a flight control system for an X-29 advanced um, uh, fighter prototype. Now, for those of you not familiar with the X program and advanced fighter prototypes, the X-29 was a really cool program that started off in the mid-80s and went through to the early 90s. Now, its goal was to explore two things. What a fighter did at, uh, at extra, uh, uh, that was extremely unstable. Most fighter designs like the F-16, the F-18 have static margins of about plus 5 to 10 percent. The X-29 was plus 29 percent. The other thing to, uh, the other thing it explored was exploring high angles uh, uh, what this would do at high angles of attack which is why you saw uh, you see it with a forward swept wing and what I did in my thesis, I took it another level. What I did was I explored putting on extra bits and pieces to explore not just what it would do in terms of longitudinal dynamics, but in terms of lateral dynamics as well. And really, my thesis with this was what you would call the first baby steps to exploring what flight control laws would look like through extreme plus and extreme plus agility designs. And ultimately, what it would look, uh, and ultimately, what it would look, and what I mean by extreme plus and extreme plus agility designs is ultimately aircraft that could uh, is ultimately aircraft that could do things like this. A big shout out there to um, Whitman51 for that excellent video and then also another big shout out to um, the Royal Malaysian Air Force uh, for putting on that excellent display of the Su-30 MKM at the Singapore Air Show in um, 2016. Great video and I encourage you all to watch it. So really that experience of putting together flight control laws to deliberately explore what an aircraft would do at high angles of attack, but also exploring, combining that with lateral maneuvers, ultimately form the intellectual bedrock of where chassis sim would come from. And so consequently, when I came to putting chassis sim together, I went down the transient road. So consequently, Chassis Sim's numerical core is a full multi-body vehicle dynamic model 
that is integrated using a six order cash carp algorithm. And that ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, gave chassis sim the basis to do something very, very unique, and that is transient lap time simulation. Now, one of the holy grails of vehicle dynamics, in particular of road vehicle dynamics, is to specify a path and to solve and to solve transiently what the vehicle can do in terms of max performance. And ultimately that means that chassis sim can deal with situations like this. So we've got speed, steered angle, throttle, and here are the tire loads. That's front tire loads, rear tire loads. Take a look at the variation in that tire load, ladies and gentlemen. It's now dealing with bumps. And that, ladies and gentlemen, really illustrates the areas where transient lap time simulation can go, that pseudo-static lap time simulation can't. That, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the first bedrocks that makes Chassis Sim unique. Now, Chassis Sim has a fully detailed vehicle model. However, a word of caution, one of the things I always stress in the chassis sim boot camps, you start simple, get cute later. Don't go the other way around, you will get yourself lost. However, if you need to get detailed, you've got the ability for fully detailed error, uh, for fully detailed error maps, firmer mechanical tire models, non-linear damper models, and, and full engine um, 3D uh, models as a function of torque and RPM. However, the other thing that chassis sim brings to the party is its ability to interact with race data. It can use race data to fill in the blanks of what you don't know. So that includes circuit creation, including the bumps, and the ability to reverse engineer tires and aero from race data. And on top of all that, ladies and gentlemen, it can export that out to packages like as Wintax, M uh, Motac, um, um, Pi Toolbox, or should I, I should say Cosworth um, Toolbox, and uh, um, Bo uh, and uh, Bosch Wind Darab, so that you've got the ability to overlay with actual data to really get on top of where you need to go with the vehicle model. Now, any of these on their own would be valuable, but that one, two, three punch of this, combined with the ability to use race data to fill in the blanks and export it out to a data acquisition package of your choice, give Chassis Sim a very, very powerful one, two, three punch. And that ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, allows Chassis Sim to get correlation like this. Actual is colored, simulated as black. Speed, throttle, front dampers, rear dampers, steered angle, lateral G, longitudinal G, front and rear roll. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the ultimate proof of the pudding of that one, two, three punch we just discussed previously. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why you do, uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, really illustrates what Chassis Sim brings to the party. So, to sum up, the thing that Chassis Sim brings to the party is its transient numerical engine that had its origins ultimately in aerospace um, flight dynamics and control. It uses a highly detailed vehicle model, and here's the thing, it uses race data extensively to fill in the blanks to give you the sort of correlation that is industry standard. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, don't take my word for it. Explore our um, online simulation and see for yourself why Chassis Sim is the winner's edge, and we'll catch you in the next Chassis Sim video tutorial.